Slightly obscure hidden things within DaVinci Resolve that aren't so obscure and weird and niche that you won't actually find any use for them. I'm trying to find that middle ground for this video. Brought to you by our good friends over at Motion VFX. Chapters are down below, I've named them all properly, so you can skip ahead if you want to. Let's not waste any more time and take a look at the first one. Blackmagic Proxy Generator. So the proxy workflow within DaVinci Resolve allows you to take some high resolution, kind of hard to edit video, for example, turn it into a proxy, which is generally a smaller, much easier to edit version of your original media, which means you can edit things on your timeline much quicker and much smoother. It's a really cool workflow. If you've never heard of proxies, give it a quick search on YouTube. I made a video, so I've linked that down below. Go take a look. But when you install DaVinci Resolve itself, you also install a completely separate application called the Proxy Generator. So rather than having to come into DaVinci Resolve, input your footage, find your clips, and then generate your proxy media, instead, if you open up your start menu, or if you're on Mac, you just do a little search for the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. This will be installed on your system because it comes installed with DaVinci Resolve itself. If we open that up, you'll see this. This is the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. This is completely separate from DaVinci Resolve. We can close Resolve down and leave this here. Then what we can do with this is simply select our format. So let's just go with 265, 10-bit, 1080p. Then we can go to Add in the bottom left-hand corner and we can find an entire folder we want to create proxies for. Now I've got this My Workflow folder down here and then we can hit Start and it's just gonna go through all of the video files within that folder and create proxies for us. Which means we can go and play some games or we can go make a cup of tea or whatever. We can even go and edit in a completely separate project within DaVinci Resolve and just leave this proxy generator in the background doing its thing. When it's done, in that original folder you selected, My Workflow, you'll see a proxy folder and any proxies that have been generated will now sit within that proxy folder. Then if we just grab the original clips, the ones we used to generate the proxies, I can import them into DaVinci Resolve and straight away we can see we have our proxy logo, which means it's automatically found the proxies. We can drop them on our timeline and now we're editing with those proxies and we can really quickly, by clicking on this icon, switch between the actual proxies or the camera originals. And when you go to export, it will use the originals, not the proxies, and off you go. Right, next up, PSD files, Photoshop files. Now these don't actually need to come from your Adobe Photoshop if you're sensible and using something else like Affinity, but if you do have one of these PSD files, not only can you import it directly onto your timeline within DaVinci Resolve, but you can actually explode it into its original layers. So first of all, let's just import some media and we're gonna jump straight to my desktop and I've got an original PSD from Photoshop and a PSD that's been exported from Affinity. So let's open both of these up and as you can see, they both import straight away with no issues. Now they come in as images, so I can grab them, drop them on my timeline like so, lengthen them out, make them shorter, do all of the usual transforms, whatever we want to do, it just acts like any other image. But now if we right click on that PSD on the timeline, there is an option right at the very top, split PSD layers in place. And that will explode that Photoshop file into its original layers, providing those layers were kind of saved when the PSD was exported. We even get the layers which were disabled. I can delete those if I want to. We can move these down. I can disable this one, which is the background. We've got our different text. We've got our logo. We've got my big stupid face and you can just do what you like with those. You could even come in and animate any of the different elements, do the things that you need to do. It's pretty cool. Next up, reference compositions. Now, once again, I have made a video all about these, linked down below, and these can get quite complicated if you try and do some really fancy stuff with them, but let me just show you what they do in that simplest form. Now these are particularly useful if you do a face cam, corner cam, webcam kind of thing. You put your face in the corner and you want to make a reusable asset that you can use basically in any project going forwards. Now the easiest way to do this, let's just grab a clip, put it on my timeline, then we can right click that clip on the timeline and there is an option, create referenced composition. As soon as we do that, we get to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this face cam 
and then create. And that will actually create this face cam, this new asset within the bin you currently have open. And you'll see this jazzy, sparkly little icon. That means that this is a referenced fusion composition. Now it won't look like much has changed, but if we right click on that clip on the timeline and then we open in the fusion page, we can start to do some fusioniness to this. So all I'm gonna do really simply is grab a transform, we'll bring this down onto the line and then just do a size and let's put this in the top right hand corner. Now let's also just grab a drop shadow. So I'm gonna hit shift and then space to open up our little search. We'll search for drop shadow. There it is, we'll add this down here. So now we've got a drop shadow on there just like so. Now if we jump back to the edit page, there we go. We can lift this up, we can put another clip underneath and we have our little face cam. But this is where it gets interesting. We can delete all of that. Let's just grab a completely different clip and bring this on the timeline. Now if we find our face cam within the media pool, single click so it's highlighted, you'll get this little red box around it. Then go to our clip on the timeline, right click, there is an option, link to reference composition. And that will just apply the exact same thing we created a moment ago. So we can lift this one up, let's put something else underneath. There we go, we have our face cam with our drop shadow. Now let's just grab this once again, put this somewhere else on the timeline, and then we can do the same thing to this other clip. So we find the face cam, single click, find the clip on our timeline, right click, link to reference composition, boom, we now have face cam. So anytime we want to do it, we can. Now, what we can then do is if we find one of those clips which has that reference composition, or alternatively find our face cam within our media pool, right click, open in the fusion page. Then if we go to transform, and let's just put this over on the left instead, jump back to the edit page, our face cam is now on the left. But so is this one. It's one single fusion composition, and any clips that you link to that fusion composition will have the changes applied. So we can always move our face cam once without having to replicate it over and over again. Now, if you wanna get super fancy with these, you can even build reference compositions using multiple different clips, which is really, really clever. Again, there is a video linked down below to how I talk about these in a little bit more detail, which you should have a look at if you're interested in knowing more about reference compositions. Now, what's not very hidden or obscure is the link in the description, which takes you to Motion VFX, who happen to be the sponsor of this very video. Motion VFX creates a bunch of presets and plugins specifically for our beloved DaVinci Resolve. They're super swanky and they make your life easier. What's not to like? And they've got plugins for pretty much any project you could ever think of. If you need transitions for music videos, M Transition Music Video. If you do fancy dining or cooking videos, M Dining. If you do wedding videos, there's M Wedding and M Wedding 2. Or if you just need the essentials to get you started, why not check out M Tuber 4 or M Essentials. I love a bit of Motion VFX if I want to add some jazz to any of my videos. Drag, drop, customize, done. Easy peasy. So give that link a little click if you fancy checking out Motion VFX for yourself. Hmm. Right now, this one is studio only. This is the only studio one I included in this, so it's not available within the free version. You'd need to be on the paid studio version, but it's called Audio Classification. And it is quite cool. And I'll be honest, I always forget that it's there. It's not something that really kind of falls into my workflow all that much, but it's worth talking about because it is forgotten about and it is quite cool. Hmm. So I've got this folder here called Sounds, and within this, we've just got a bunch of different audio clips, and there's actually some video clips within here as well. There's some dialogue, there's some music, there's some general sound effects, impacts, whatever else. Now what we can do is highlight all of this audio, right click, come down to the AI tools, and there is audio classification, and then analyze. Now this is generally really quick. The speed will depend on your system and the length of the clips included and whatever else, but there you go. As you can see, it's done that for me. Now this does two separate things. The first thing it does, if we click on one of these, so I've got this one here, which is a dog barking, then open up the metadata, top right-hand corner, click on this little icon, 
and then select audio to go to the audio category. And what it's done is it's put the right category so it knows this is an audio effect rather than dialogue, music or silence. But it's also done these subcategories. It's identified that it's a dog barking, so now we've got dogs and animals. Now, rather than having to do that individually, if we open up these smart bins, which if you don't see smart bins within your media pool, simply click on these three little dots and show smart bins. And then within here, expand collections. Now we've got things like video clips and audio only, which all does exactly what it says on the tin. But now we've also got dialogue and all of my spoken word audio clips will be in there. Music, all of my music has been automatically categorized into music. Sound effects, silence, and uncategorized. We've then got subcategories, and if we expand that, all of those subcategories that we found, like dog and animals, there's more of them. So we've got things like car, animals, aircraft, dog, effects, helicopters, horns, impacts, knocks, trains, trucks, and a bunch of others. What you actually see in here will obviously depend on what the classification has identified within your audio. But it just means you can dump all of your audio into one bin, classify it, and then it'll automatically be filtered out just like this. Sticking with the audio theme, we have layered audio editing. Now this might not be something you want on all of the time because it can actually cause you some issues, but let me show you what it is and then you can make your own decision as to whether it's useful or not for you. So I've got this clip on my timeline, it's video and audio as you'd expect. Now if I was to go and grab any other piece of audio from my media pool, let's just say this song here, bring it on my timeline, if I was to move this up and release and then bring it down, the audio from that original clip will be overwritten. That's kind of the default expected behavior. That's pretty common in all editing suites, to be honest, that's kind of how this stuff works. But if you click on timeline at the very top, then go to audio, there is an option, layered audio editing. You can also find this within the keyboard customization and add a keyboard shortcut if you like, which I've done, Alt and J. So if I enable this layered audio editing, do the exact same thing, bring this track down, put it above, release my mouse, then grab it and move it back. It doesn't actually override the audio. It layers it, it stacks it. So you can never actually overwrite that original audio. And we can do this multiple different times because it's creating layers rather than just overwriting things. Now this is particularly useful if you've got a bunch of different audio to make up your A-roll audio because you may grab something, bring it down and want to fine tune it and if you move it too far to the left and then you go back to the right, there's a big gap here. But by enabling your layered audio editing, you can move this to get it in completely the right place and never have to worry about accidentally deleting something. Now just to be super clear with this, when you put an audio clip above the other one, you cannot hear that original audio. Even if you were then to disable this new one on top, you would just hear nothing. But if we move it out the way, our original audio comes back. Text box, AKA wrap text. You can wrap text. They introduced this a few versions ago in DaVinci Resolve. I have mentioned it in the past, but just in case. From the edit page, if you open up titles and then come to text plus, what's going on here? There you go, text plus this one, drag it onto your timeline, give it a click, open up the inspector, put whatever you like in here. Let's make this nice and long like so. Then go to layout, change this type from point to text box. That puts a text box around all of this text. You then have the option to wrap to text box, which will actually do proper text wrapping. If you click on the little drop down box and come down to fusion overlay, you can then see that text box. So you can make it bigger or smaller. Now, as you can see, when I make this smaller, the text is still appearing above or below it. So we're wrapping the text, but we're not clipping to the text box. If you want that to happen, you just tick clip to text box as well. And then that will show you the text, which is currently being clipped, AKA hidden. But if you make this bigger, it will then appear. Neato Benito, video collage. Collage, collage, split screen. 
<laughs> essentially. It's a split screeny thing. There's actually an effect built onto the edit page within the effects library, which allows you to do split screens and video collages really quickly and easily. And it has some neat stuff in it. This probably needs its own video to be fair, which I may make in the future. If you wanna see it, let me know. But let me show you really quickly what it does because it's quite cool. And again, easy to miss. So on the edit page in the effects library, resolve FX, let's click our little magnifying glass and we're gonna search for video collage. Now, if I grab this effect and drag it onto my first clip over here, like so, it will look a bit weird. Now, what you essentially have to do is use one clip to build up your video collage. So we've got workflow, create background. We're gonna change this to be create tile and it's gonna put this first clip in this tile. Then we can choose however many columns and rows we like. Now to make your life easier, once again, click on this little drop down underneath your preview screen and change this to be the open effects overlay. And now you can actually see what we're working with. So we can increase the columns, the rows, we can stagger them, we can round the clips within them, we can change the margins, do all of this stuff here. Now I recommend you just do all of these globals once, do it on your first clip, get them looking however you want it to look. Then you can jump over to tiles. This is our active tile one, this one top left. But if we wanted to move this to tile two, tile three, tile four, we can just simply select this little drop down box. And then from here, there's loads of cool stuff. Like we can change the sizing, we can resize the content within the tiles themselves. We can add drop shadows, we can add tile borders, either to individual tiles or we can apply it to all the tiles. There's even tile animation. So by default, it will say animate manually keyframe, but if we change this to intro and outro, we can have these shrink. So if we hit play, it's just gonna expand in and then expand out like that. But how do you fill all the other tiles? Well, if we stack a bunch of clips on top of each other, just like this, so we've got our four clips, then click on our first one and we'll do a copy, Control and C, and then we can click on our other ones and do an Alt or Option and V to paste attributes. Now what I'm gonna do is click all video attributes and then untick it to make sure nothing is currently ticked, then go to plugins, because this is the only one we want, and then apply, and that's gonna apply the exact same thing to all of these four clips. Then we just go to each one, go to effects and change the tile. Tile two, this one can be tile three, and this one can be tile four. Now we've got all four tiles with our animations, with our border, just like this. On one hand, it's kind of complicated and fiddly to do, but on the other hand, it has loads of options, so it's worth talking about. Now for my final tip, I'm gonna show you how to very abruptly end a YouTube video.